Hello, everyone. This is Rick with the Cyber Pro Podcast. Industry leaders share their insights. Today, we're actually going to be talking to somebody who is not just a cybersecurity professional, but so much more. So, Dr. Stein, tell us who you are and why you are awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. Uh, I am Alexander Stein. I'm the founder of Dolus Advisors, a psychodynamic strategy consultancy based in New York. Uh, I am a trained and licensed psychoanalyst, uh, and it is from that perspective and with that body of knowledge and those expertise that I approach my consulting and advisory work. So Dulles Advisors has a suite of offerings from uh, leadership development, uh, governance, um, working with senior teams to fraud, corruption, abuses of power, to cybersecurity, emerging technologies, social responsibility and AI, um, culture and uh, ethics um, in organizations. The, the nodal element of that array is human decision-making and behavior. Um, my perspective on what happens in organizations and in human ecosystems, uh, particularly with particular focus on people in leadership positions, people in positions of power and responsibility, is people, really, like the decisions that are made. What are the things that impact and influence good decisions versus less good decisions? What are the ways in which you know people and organizations can fall into a hole or tie their shoelaces together despite best efforts otherwise? And um, you know, really improve things as well as to solve problems and mitigate uh, unintended problems. So this is normally where I would ask about you know technology evolutions or something crazy in the cybersecurity space, but I really think that we're going to gain so much knowledge from you on this. How can cybersecurity and the landscape as a whole? evolve around that human decision-making, that behavior-making, because everything we see is still social engineering. Well, not everything is social engineering, but let's come back to that. My uh, central premise in the cybersecurity space is that cybersecurity is a human issue that involves technology, not a technology problem uh, that can be solved technocratically. So uh, taking that as a point of entry to thinking about um, inverting the paradigm of understanding what are the problems and therefore what are the solutions to those problems is looking at every element of an organization, right? How is it structured? What is its culture? Um, what is the tone of the leadership? Uh, what, what kind of person is the CISO or the CRO? What kind of team has she or he built? What are the kinds of things that they think about? What is their industry and their sector and their space? And you know, how are they interacting with the outside world? And what are the threats that they might be um, receiving? Or what is what are the attacks that they could be vulnerable to? But also thinking about what is an insider threat? And from that perspective, um, we can look at obviously, you know, actual, you know people, bad actors who are inside who want to do harm, and of course, the ever-present negligent, uh, unintended insider threat, but also poor leadership or um, uh, poor governance or poor best practices and or the ways in which organizations um, have blind spots with regard to self-inflicted wounds or self-created vulnerabilities that they then try to cover over with some form of Band-Aid without doing a root cause analysis. Most problems, not all problems, but most problems are multifaceted and multidimensional. And if you fix one thing, it becomes like whack-a-mole. It doesn't fix other things. And unless you're, you're really delving deeply into the substructure of the multifacetedness of the vulnerabilities, no matter you know how shiny your blinky lights are or how much you've invested in some form of protect defend system you're not going to get everything that needs to be gotten 
So how do you take that idea of not focusing on the tech, the technology side mm-hmm. uh, and bring that leadership perspective, bring that human mindset into making that organization more robust in cybersecurity? The first step is having leadership in an organization that actually um, understands and values that perspective. Uh, There is a little bit of an uphill push to this day, no matter my established reputation in the marketplace in uh, in as much as it it is actually a small self-selected group of leaders who think in the way that I'm speaking right now. Um, Many people want to minimize um, the whole so-called soft component of this. And, you know, it's, it's a cardinal error that's being made out of the gate. Un- unfortunately, there's nothing I can do to persuade people otherwise except continue to write and speak and do podcasts like yours and do, you know, PSAs that get the message out. Uh, to normalize and destigmatize thinking about the human element in um, a, as a central feature of the protect defend array. So you know, once let's just say you have somebody who is on board and you know gets it and isn't um, uh, immediately allergic to the idea of let's say putting human element on top of the technology element, or in any case, let's say equalizing them. Um, You can have a conversation uh, around what's going on. What are you actually concerned about? What is that made of? What are you doing now? How would you like to improve that? What do you think the deficiencies of what you're doing are and how can that be made more robust? Um, What else have you considered? You know, there, there are a million questions to be asked and answered as a process of coming to really diagnose the situation uh, of a given organization and what it's confronting or what it may be confronting. I love that. Based upon your area of expertise, right, that human decision-making, that behavior expert, do you have a compelling real-world story where that expertise has helped others, especially as it pertains to cybersecurity? Yes. Well, I always endeavor to be of help to others. <laughs> uh but yeah, I mean, there are a number of uh, engagements I've had where the kinds of things that I'm talking about have been given scope to be put into play. One that comes to mind is um, for uh, a U.S.-based uh, national organization, very large workforce, where the CISO um, is a very progressive-minded thinker and was really interested in um bringing to bear something innovative and um, uh, in some regards untested, certainly in in that organization. Um, and so I was engaged as the human factors architect and partnered with one of the large global consulting firms that uh, brought in uh, all of the technical infrastructure to execute and roll out to the workforce Uh, what I had designed. And fundamentally, it is um, a a, a wholesale re-understanding of how to deliver uh, cybersecurity awareness and training. And um, so I developed a proprietary framework um, for uh, understanding um, how to do that. And we rolled that out first as a pilot program and then developed that Once we got the data back on the positive results um, to tweak, you know, and take the bugs out and rethink some of the things that I had brought to bear, which is also very, very important. Um, You know, inevitably, there are going to be things that look great on paper or that seem to work in theory, but don't quite play out. And some of that is um, just a universal reality of the difference between research and practice. And the other is that every situation is unique. And so what will work really well in, you know, situation A may not in B. So, Dr. Stein, you used a term human factors. It's something that I've heard recently as a term that really focuses on 
call it humanity in any type of technological landscape. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious how human factors can play a role as a critical aspect in making a robust cybersecurity strategy. Well, as I said earlier, um, humans are at the center, people are at the center of everything that we do. Uh, and so the notion that um, some form of security protection uh, can be put into place that somehow leapfrogs over the human element is a, 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 a fundamentally misguided. So in some respects, I could simply say, you know, there's no way that it doesn't involve uh, everything. Um, there are probably a lot of different meanings to the idea of human factors. You know, it comes out in ergonomics and in um, uh, uh, other kinds of safety forward um, spaces, you know, petrochemicals, aviation, surgery, um, aeronautics, you know, places where what people do and the decisions that they make and the quality control and the safety uh, uh, protocols for their decision making are always considered mission critical. Um, you know, one of the issues in cybersecurity is that it's a department in a sense, as if, you know, the fact that everyone is at a computer or everyone has a device or everyone potentially could be uh, enabling something bad happening. Um, should, in a sense, uh, um, immediately trigger or cut a re-understanding of its place in the organization. Yes, it does need to be in a spot, and it does have to have a leader of that department. But really, it, it is um, suffused throughout the entire organization. Cybersecurity is something that everyone needs to participate in, and creating um, uh, a system that cultivates and motivates um, cyber champions, in essence, you know, partners in the workforce, uh, not just designating them as weak links in waiting, uh, is enormously important in helping everyone to do her and his part in what's needed to keep things secure. I love it. So these, these are always so short when we do the CyberFro podcast, but I want to end on a fun final note for you. What's your sure. favorite piece of technology currently that makes you smile? Um, the human mind. Uh, I, I consider uh, psychology and, and psychoanalysis to be a technology itself. Psychoanalysis was developed in the late 19th and early 20th century alongside a number of other, you know, hard technologies. And so when I encounter people who are psychologically literate, and interested in introspection and self-awareness and asking why, not just how and what, uh, I am completely jazzed. Dr. Stein, thank you so much for being on the CyberPro Podcast. Thank you. Thank you for tuning into the CyberPro Podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on new podcasts and all of our cool bonus content.